All right, now we get to talk about something that is probably new to you. Let's talk about level curves. When we have a function that has more than just two variables like x and y, we're talking about a graph that is going to be in more than just two dimensions. So with the equation of a line, as we were looking at earlier, y equals mx plus b, we just have the x-axis and the y-axis. In this case, we're looking at a function here, q equals x raised to the 0.4 power times y to the 0.6 power. So we have two variables that are inputs and one output, q. So here what we're imagining is maybe this is a production function. A production function, we have two inputs. x might be something like labor and y could be machines. And what we want to know with this function is whenever we input different numbers of workers or worker hours for x and different numbers of machines into y, we plug those in, raise them to the 0.4 and the 0.6 power, multiply them together, then we're going to get an amount of output out. What we want to be able to do, because graphing this in three dimensions, since we have three variables, is kind of hard to do by hand and also kind of hard to visualize, although we're going to look at this in just a second. What we want to be able to do is make what we call a level curve. And a level curve means we're going to pick a value for Q, say 5 here. And what we want to do is for X on the X axis down here and for Y on the Y axis up here, we want to pick out a lot of different values of X and Y that when we pick those values, it gives us an output of 5. Now one value that would do this is what if we picked x and y to both be 5? We know that's going to work because if we have q equals 5 raised to the 0.4 times 5 raised to the 0.6, how can we simplify that? Well, you add those exponents, right? And so what we have here is 5 raised to the 0.4 plus 0.6, or 5 to the first power, and that just equals 5. So we know that one point on this level curve that gives us 5 units of output is going to be 5x and 5y, and we would plot that point like so. Now let's have a look at what this entire function would look like in three dimensions. So here's a plot of a lot of points. Now these aren't just the points that give us five units of output. This is a three dimensional plot and we're going to look at this a few different ways. But here we have X going along this axis on the right side. We have Y, so how many machines we're using going along the left hand side. And as we use more workers and more machines, what we get is more output. So this third dimension is Q, that's the output of the function, which is maybe the output for a factory, right? So as we go higher, we're producing more output. So what we can see here, let's just look at the little pink points along the bottom here, along the x-axis. If we're on the x-axis, then what's happening is y is set to zero right here. y is set to zero. And what this is telling us is no matter how many workers we use, how much x we plug in, if they have no machines, they can't produce any output. So we're stuck at zero, right? We're stuck down on the ground floor on, on the bottom here. But same thing if we didn't have any workers, zero workers here, if we had a lot of machines sitting in a factory, they're not going to operate themselves. We get no output. But let's try to pick out that point five workers and five machines. Let me just rotate this around a little bit so we can kind of see what these points are looking like, right? So what we're trying to do if we want to produce five units of output is we want to produce five units of output. That means we're five high. And if we go along to the right here and we try to say, okay, well, there's a point here somewhere where we're using five X's 
and we're using five Y's. And when we go up to that point, probably one right around here, it's going to give us five units of output. Now let me turn this graph to where we're in a helicopter and we're looking down on it. Now here we can more clearly pick out that point where we're using five X's and five Y's. And let me grab this graph right on that point right there where it's, uh, let's see, it looks like this one. This point where we're using five X's and five Y's. And let me try to rotate the picture back up, keeping our eye on that point. And we can see that it's one of the ones kind of right around in here. Now let me change the view from what we're looking at now where we see that red means we're producing no output and blue are low levels of output, right? And then yellow and green a little bit higher, orange a little bit higher, and red up at the tippy top is where we're producing about 20 units of output, right? And when we're producing 20 units of output, we have to be using about... 20 X's and 20 Y's, right? Because 20 to the 0.4 times 20 to the 0.6 is going to give us 20 as our output. Now let me change our view here to look at this graph in a little bit different way. I'm going to change the style to something called a surface with contour. So now this graph looks more like a hill. Let me turn this to where we can look underneath. Here we're an earthworm and we're kind of looking underneath the hill. And let me turn it back around to where we're humans and we're looking at the hill. What I've done here is told the program and the program I'm using here is called Maple. It's a symbolic algebra processor, which means that it does great graphs, but it'll also solve equations. It'll do derivatives and things like that for you but I really like its plotting capabilities. You see this little line here that is going around, and if we look over here at the Q-axis, how high we are, it tells us we're producing five units of output. What that little line, what that little curve is doing, as we turn it down to where we're in the helicopter view, what that line is doing is it's tracing out all of the different ways, all the different combinations of X's and Y's, the labor and the machines, that would let us produce five units of output. And here we see that using five X's and five Y's is, of course, one of those ways we could produce. But what this lets us do is visualize all the combinations of X and Y at one time that would allow us to produce five units of output. And we call this kind of line a level curve. And we call it a level curve because when we're looking at this hill head on like this, we can see that all these points are level. And here on this graph, of course, we have many level curves. We have one that looks like it would be for one unit of output and for three and five and seven units of output and nine, etc. So all the odd numbers of output. Now we could make a level curve here for any number of units of output. If we had them all on there though, right, we wouldn't be able to see anything but all these, these bands going around. So you just choose a few of them to plot at one time. So these level curves, it turns out, are gonna be very important for us to get to know as we go through the class. So what I want us to do here by hand, now that we can see what the level curves for this function look like, let's plot some points by hand to get a feeling for where these points come from and graph one. So what we want to do here is make a little table of some points where we have some X's and some Y's and we want to make a table of X's and Y's such that when we plug them into this function, we always get five. Now, we could pick 
10 or 8 or 7 and a half for that matter if we wanted to, but let's, let's just do one level curve for all the ways we could produce 5 units. Our goal later on is going to be to try to figure out the cheapest way, what's the cheapest combination of labor and machines that we could pick to produce those 5 units. Now how could we do this by hand? There are a lot of ways, but to me the simplest way to do would be to take this equation and solve it for, say, y. And here's what I have in mind. If we have 5 equals x to the point 4, y to the point 6, let's say solve this equation for y, and then we can plug in values of x, and it'll spit out the right value of y that gives us 5 units of output. So let's see, how would we do this? Well, all we have to do is divide both sides by x to the point 4, right? And then that x to the point 4 on the right will go away. And then how are we going to get rid of that y to the point 6 exponent there? Right. Using our rules of exponents, anytime you want to get rid of an exponent, whatever it is, say k, raise both sides to the 1 over that exponent. Raise both sides to the 1 over k. So what we want to do is raise both sides to the 1 over 0.6. Right, on your calculator, put in 1 divided by 0.6, and let's see what we get. Should get something like 1.6666666, right? If we're doing that to the right-hand side, we're just going to end up with y. On the left, we want to raise everything over here to the 1.66666 power. And we could do that separately. We could, since these are all multiplied and divided, we can raise both sides to the 1.666 running power there. And we need to do the same thing here. One point well, 1 over 0.6 or 1.66666, however you want to do that. So take a minute and simplify that and see what are we going to get. Well, 5 to the 1.66666 power, we're going to get something like 14.63 or so. And don't worry if you got something a little bit different than that, if you round it a little bit different, as long as you're pretty close, around 14.6. And then on the bottom, we're going to end up with x to the, we multiply the exponents here, the 0.4 times the 1 over 0.6. It's going to end up with 0.4 over 0.6, or x to the 2 thirds power or 0.66666666 running, right? So what this is going to let us do is plug any value for x in and get y. Now we already know that one point we should be able to get is if we plug in 5 for x, we should get 5 for y. Practice that and make sure you do, although, again, depending on how you round, if you plug in x equals 5, you might get y equals 5.01 or 4.999. It's going to be really close, though. So please, pause the video and practice this. Making sure you're really good at your calculator is an essential part of this class, and it's not something I can do for you. You're going to have to do the practice to make sure you can very quickly and very accurately do this. So how about Pause the video and plug in these numbers, 1, 3, 10, and say 15, and see what values for y you get, and make sure you get the same numbers I get. Pause the video now and do it, and then we'll graph them. All right, so you should get numbers very close to these in the table. So what we want to do is visualize that curve that we were looking at in Maple a minute ago by plugging in these other points and plotting them. So if we have 1 for x down here, we have about 14.63 for y. So we're just going to plot these as close as we can here. And 3, we get a little over 7. So 3 and about 7. 
and then 10 we get about 3.15 all right something about there and 15 we get about 2.4 and the idea here is that there's substitutability between these inputs as we use more of the input x say labor then that allows us to use less y so this curve is always going to be downward sloping so let's connect all those points together in you know kind of sketching a curve that looks a little bit like what we saw before and now we can kind of get a feel for what that level curve looks like so this is a little bit different. This is a little bit weird than, you know, compared to things you've probably done before, but that's okay. We're going to come back to these later in the course. I'm trying to introduce all of the mathematical ideas we're going to be using so that, number one, you're not shocked. And if something doesn't make sense to you, you can review it a little more. And when we do these things later, you'll already have a seed planted there. So again, the interpretation here is, we're trying to view all the ways we could produce five units and our goal later on, one of our goals later on, we'll be able to try to figure out what's the cheapest way to do that. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Otherwise, please consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.